Welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about which AI things or stuff do I actually use and why. Okay, so I've made a little list here. I'm going to be talking about what I actually use and what I don't use. So Claude Code I use pretty regularly. However, I've started using it slightly differently. To be honest with you, I've started using it more for MCPs, more for CLI commands, more for Docker, and more for like things like the discovery period, right? So if I have to, for example, connect to a third party API, I will give Claude Code the documentation of that third party API. And I'll tell it to experiment, I'll tell it to make curl requests and understand how it all works, and then make like a basic script. But then from there, if I wanted to actually make an entire project, I would almost definitely use Codex now. Codex is superior to Claude Code today. It won't be next week or in two weeks or whatever, but for now, Codex is actually better than Claude Code for coding, right? But I would say Claude Code is better for kind of making curl requests, you know, doing CLI commands, MCPs, all of that stuff. So it's more like a code assistant, whereas Codex for me is the coder, right? Now, I do have a theory that a lot of people use Claude Code without thinking mode, right? Because you actually have to specifically say, use thinking mode or think about it or ultra think. You know, there's the whole meme about ultra think. And if you actually look at Codex, Codex exclusively uses thinking mode, right? So what I've actually found to increase my Claude Code output quality is to make sure to tell it to think about things. Because... A lot of people just assume that Claude Code is ready to go out the box, but it's not. You actually do need to do some things. So if you're having problems with Claude Code, just have to think about things, ultra think, that kind of stuff. And I promise you it will find the solution to your problem if you tell it to ultra think. Which is why, in my opinion, actually one of the reasons that Codex is better is because it uses GPT-5 thinking and you can put it on high reasoning mode. So thinking modes, 100%, I do use them. MCPs, I don't use as many MCPs as people might think. The only ones I really use is Superbase, which I could replace with the CLI at any time. Next time I make a project, I will host Superbase locally. When I make the project, I'll have CLI set up and it will do everything using the CLI. So I probably won't use this for much longer, to be honest. But for now, just because of the way my project is set up, I do use the Superbase MCP. I also use the Playwright MCP a lot because it's good at showing the browser logs and code to give context to Claude Code or Codex. I use the Uptash MCP just because I use Redis. And then probably the only MCP that I would really highly recommend is DigitalOcean or something like that. Um, because if you're struggling to push projects to actual live websites, the DigitalOcean MCP will do this for you immediately. Actually, one that I did miss here is Bright Data. I also use the Bright Data MCP in order to get information from specific websites. There are certain websites that Claude or even Gina can't scrape, but Bright Data can actually scrape websites that, you know, maybe you can't scrape, for example, Facebook, LinkedIn, that kind of stuff. So if I'm making something really specific and I need to be able to scrape these websites, Bright Data can help you with that. Bright Data is actually a sponsor of this video. If you want to check out Bright Data, there'll be a link in the description and the pinned comment. Um, and then let's go on to CLI commands. So I use, what, what I mean by CLI is basically allowing Claude Code to run its own terminal commands, right? So if I want to start a Docker instance, I can say to it, start a Docker instance for WordPress. It will create the files and then it will actually run Docker Compose up and then if I need to run like a script inside the Docker container, Claude Code can also do that very well. Now for this, like I said at the beginning, I would almost exclusively exclusively be using Claude Code for that because Codex is not that good at running Docker commands and doing external things. It's very good at coding inwardly, but it's not very good at coding outwardly, like, you know, curl requests and things like that. It's quite slow as well. So Definitely Docker is a huge game changer once you actually understand why you're using it. It's it's massive because you can just, it's, it's like a self-contained, it's your project in its own container. So it can very easily be controlled and you can run certain things and you can, it's very, very useful. Obviously GitHub as well, you, you need to be using GitHub CLI. Now the rest of them on this list, in my opinion, are distractions and they don't actually help in any way, shape or form, okay? Context engineering, maybe, 
right? If it might be better to to add a specific feature to your AI, context engineering might be okay. But I can almost guarantee that just running Codex on its own on its own is going to be as good, if not better, than running context engineering. Sequential thinking and other behavioral MCPs. I stopped using these a very long time ago. I think they just bulk up the context and they actually make the output worse, not better. Any other AI devs, the only one that I would say that's not on this list, well, there's two actually, that I would say are interesting. There's obviously Google, Gemini, which I, I should have just put here, Gemini, CLI. I think when they release their new model, it will be top notch. It will be amazing for two to three weeks and hopefully it will be free as well. And then the only other one that I'm interested in really is Quen. Quen for me has been cooking pretty hard recently. And I think Quen might actually be onto something and I think they're actually doing good stuff. I don't like DeepSeek. I don't really like anything else, but Quen does seem good. Actually, one more is GLM, what is it? GLM Z 4.5 or something, or whatever it's called. Also seems pretty interesting from my tests. But to be honest with you, I would only exclusively today, right, be using Claude Code and Codex. I would not use any other AI devs whatsoever. Claude Flow, again, waste of time in my opinion. It just creates absolute crap. Like it looks cool, don't get me wrong. And I think maybe if the models become super highly intelligent in the future, Claude Flow will be amazing. But yeah, just for now, at least, I'm not using Claude Flow at all. I don't think it's very good in, in today's state. It just creates bloat and crap. And it does look cool, though. And then on the same vein, Claude Agents, I just haven't really found a reason big enough to look into these in great detail. Also, hooks. I think potentially agents are useful. I just, I'm not using them today, right? Now, I'll probably get some flack for this and people will say they're 100% necessary and blah, blah, blah. But for me, I just have found that running Claude code normally just kind of works um, with some configuration on, you know, prompting in its memory and things like that. I've just found that this is what works for me. Just a quick side note here, guys. I just Googled AI dev just to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Don't you think it's unfair that Google effectively has made themselves rank number one here? Is this not is this not monopolist behavior? If you search AI dev, you would expect, to be honest with you, Claude Code to be here. Where the hell is Claude Code? Nah, there's no way like this is there's no way this is like actual actual natural ranking. Google number one, Google number two. Is that fair? That doesn't really seem fair. Okay, and then, yeah, I just did remember another thing. The only other things I use, right, I use ChatGPT every single day for basic questions to help guide me through certain processes. If I can't do something, if I want to think about how to do something. So, for example, I just added um, WooCommerce to SEO Grove, right? I wasn't going to talk about SEO Grove, but I just added WooCommerce to SEO Grove. The, the way that I started that entire process off, you can see WooCommerce here, is I had a conversation with ChatGPT and I said, please, can you help me understand how I can take my SaaS, which works like this on Shopify, and turn it into a WordPress tool? And it gave me some really good advice. It told me to get a local running WooCommerce version uh, on my local Docker, which really helped me. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. I use it for images as well. Another one I use, which I don't talk about because they were supposed to be a sponsor of the channel, but it, it, it never happens with sponsors, to be honest with you. I, I never really make it work, if that makes sense, uh, is Pixels, it's called. I use Pixels for thumbnails as well. I use Claude.ai, like the, the front end of Claude, the chat, for the same thing that I use ChatGPT, and also certain things like creating chapters for my channel for my YouTube channel uh, and stuff like that, right? But apart from that, I basically don't use any other AI things. So I think a lot of these are kind of distractions that seem like they make things easier for you, but actually make things more difficult and more complicated and create a lot of bloat for you. The reason I made this is because I, you know, I've made videos about every single one of these things in the past. And I just wanted to let people know what I actually use and what I don't. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend, and I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.